Hello, everyone. Today on the No Good Podcast, we are joined by another illustrious guest. If you have any questions about Dortmund, he is the man to ask. I'll tell you this for sure. Ladies and gentlemen, Josh. First and foremost, Josh, I just want to ask you, how have you been holding up during the pandemic? I've been good, man. I've been good. Uh, Canada hasn't always been easy. It's kind of one of those roller coasters where they, they tease you. Oh, you can be around 100 people, and now you can barely be around your family. So it, it's it's been a long journey, but I've been pretty good. I yeah, feel that. Definitely, definitely been tough and for all of us here in Ontario, man. Not, not, a, not, a, not a nice ride. <laughs> for sure. Um, with being inside and your, your, your channel kind of like really growing, like re- at a really fast pace, I just want to ask you, like, how did you become a fan of Dortmund and like what made you really want to start the, the channel to begin with? It's uh, definitely my most um, frequently asked question, but also my favorite one sure? to answer because, <laughs> yeah. I mean, Canadians know like uh, growing up here, if your family's not involved in the sport, which mine were not, my fa- no one in my family gave any input, my friends really any input. I'm living in a small town about 2000. So I just kind of found the game naturally. D- to be honest, it was it was FIFA 2006. My mom got me for, for Christmas. So I was, I was playing on that, uh, went to do a career mode. I know my background comes from Germany. So when, when you see the flags, it, that one rang a bell, went through the logos of the teams, saw Dortmund's, I don't know what it was. I, I clicked on it. As I got older, they were just always the, the kind of the club I, I knew from from playing career modes and, and whatnot. Started watching them in the 2009, 2010 season, and then just fell in love with watching the sport, enjoying the sport, everything that this club has done. Uh, but again, I, I've gone so many years with keeping my opinions to myself because no one in my family yeah. cares. So I just figured once COVID happened and uh, I got laid off from my job for a week, I didn't know how long I was going to be laid off for. So I just asked a buddy of mine to, uh, who's actually, he's my best friend, but asked him to, uh, if he'd be interested in starting a podcast, cause he's good at the, uh, the editing, the production side and just kind of yeah. went from there. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. I, I, I pre- appreciate the hustle, man. It seems like you're <laughs> super passionate about it and just went straight for it, man. Appreciate that. Um, so how do you think the first year went? Uh, for, for the channel, it was, uh, I didn't really know what to expect because I mean I know that there's like these the fan channels for for Premier League sides and I mean it's as you guys probably know in being in Canada growing up that was what was on TV on on TSN you you had those access to the Premier League so it would have been a very easy league to fall in love with I just yeah. always loved watching the Bundesliga I, I always loved Dortmund I just something about it just made me want to watch them that's why I watched them each and every week but there was never really that that grab so I didn't know exactly how it was gonna go to to do an English fan channel on a German based club but the beautiful thing about football is it's a worldwide thing. So we have, for example, viewers from 250 different countries across the world. It just shows how it doesn't matter really where you are. You can find a love everywhere. And I hear very similar stories to mine. People in in South Africa, people in Australia, people in Greece saying how much they love this club and they like the channel because it gives them that outlet. And uh, I couldn't have been happier, especially having a, a partnership with the club and hoping just to continue to grow. Yeah, Josh, I mean, honestly, I got to congratulate you, man, because you really tapped into, I would guess, I would say like a market that is really needy, right? I think for me, I actually kind of struggled to latch on to Dortmund in a sense where like, because I love the style of, I mean, the yellow wall, everything about the club, I love it so much. But the one issue obviously is I'm from Toronto and I don't speak any other language than English and I barely (laughs) speak it that well to begin with. So it's really hard to kind of get that kind of um, fan interaction. Obviously too, it's, it's one of the smaller fan bases if you're outside of Europe, for sure, right? So I think you you really tapped into something really special, but you just talked about, um, you know, kind of getting into it with the club. How exactly did that happen? Did they find you? Did you reach out to them? How exactly did that work? So they reached out to us relatively early on. I think about, we were about four months into the channel, and I mean, we, I think we were a little over 1,000 subscribers at the time, and uh, we got a message saying that that they love what we're doing, a big, big role that they're – the the gentleman who reached out to me was trying to involve the international fans. We're working on a project right now. I can't give too much away, but it's going to be a fun project that we're going to going to do to help embrace more of the international fan because that is a huge goal of Dortmund. I think that's why they they felt like they wanted to get drawn um, to me because I can speak English, uh, can't speak German. That's kind of kind of sucks. But they they use obviously the the English portion of it. And uh, yeah, I was streaming on their their Twitch for uh, for four or five months now and. It's been pretty cool because when it's not a German stream, there's an English outlet there. And it just, I don't know, it went, went pretty well. And I'm very honored that they like the content enough to, to reach out to me and offer me that. 
I love it, man. I love it. Um, and so you obviously too, you got in touch with other, uh, a, Dor- a couple of Dortmund legends for interviews. So what was that experience like for you? Have you ever done anything like that before? How did you like prepare yourself for that? No, I've never done anything like that before. <laughs> I, I uh, like I said, like I, I love, like I love this sport. I just, I'm, I live in a small town of two thousand, man. Like it's, it's hockey or it's, it's pretty much nothing. Honestly, even if it is another sport, it's American football or it's, it's basketball. I just, I don't know. I just, it's, it's always been my, my thoughts, my opinions that have just come in bottled up for all these years. I, I know everything about the two legends that I was lucky enough to interview, Lambert and of course Omayella. So I just kind of spoke from the heart. I, I obviously prepped some notes, tried to make sure it, it yeah. flowed together, but uh, I felt pretty comfortable up there with them. And they're both such such nice gentlemen and, and really made me feel like they, they wanted to be there. And it was on, honestly an honor to be able to interview both of them. Awesome. Is there anybody else that you maybe have lined up soon or anybody you might be thinking of reaching out to? I don't know yet. I would like to get a player. That would be, that would be the, that'd be the nice draw. I got my eye on Geo, but I, I, you know, he's a busy man. So I'll see what I can do there. Um, but for the most part, like I've done a little bit of work. Uh, I've met with Omaela, I think three times now. So he's, cause he's a, the very into the media for them. He speaks very good English as well. So mm-hmm. I, I've done a lot of stuff with him. I'm, I'm assuming I'm going to do a little bit more with him, but uh, the play, a player, a player would be the next one. So I'm hoping for Geo, but we'll see. Awesome. That sounds good, man. So um, obviously this was um, a strange season for everybody, every football fan across the world, right? Or pretty much every sports fan, every person realistically. But as for Dortmund, Dortmund did have a pretty interesting season. It was up and down. You know, there was times where uh, the club was really relying on Erling Holland to do a lot. Then he got hurt. And then other guys finally stepped up magically. Uh, looked like there was no chance of uh, the Champions League, and miraculously Dortmund ends up there. So how like how how do you think the season went? Can you give us kind of your overall thoughts of it? I feel like if you're a Dortmund fan, looking at the uh, beautiful jersey you got hung up behind you, if you've been a fan <laughs> of this, you've been a fan of this club for a while. This has been a typical Dortmund season in its own kind of way. Uh, when I just think of this club, and and when I said this this league and this club has drawn me in, it's because it's it's not straightforward and. Yes, I wish Dortmund could could win as much as Bayern. Who who doesn't? But something that you can promise you'll get when you're a Dortmund fan is you'll get entertainment. You'll get put on the edge of the sheet. sheet you'll have a heart attack. And and I followed this club when they were sitting dead last, 18th in the table, and I felt just as invested that season than I did any other ones. And this one was a little bit of the same. It was a it was an awful start. Uh, the system didn't really work. Uh, we had some players move in, move out that didn't quite, I guess, come into fruition as we kind of hoping. But there's just too much talent there, and they were hoping with time they would get it right. New manager came in, still didn't make it work. But again, over over time, the the pure quality of these players kind of came out. Sancho found form. Holland, of course, scored pretty much consistently all year. He found some magic with Bellingham and Dehoud, and and they were find find a way to make it work. And of of course, a uh, inform Marco Royce doesn't doesn't hurt at all either. So I, I had a feeling. Uh, I know as as far out after that Frankfurt loss, I was like, okay, maybe maybe this was the last straw. But there's still something in my gut saying that this team is just too good. They're going to find a way, and they did. Yeah, it was definitely um, – it was it was a tough season. I, I won't lie. At that time, I was like completely lost hope. I was like, there's no way we're catching up to Frankfurt. And then somehow we ended up in third. Well, I mean, it was just absolutely wild. But uh, there's obviously two guys that are pretty much always on the minds, I guess, for, at least in this past couple of seasons for Dortmund fans. It's Holland. It's Sancho. The two guys with, right now, at least, the biggest price tags. I know you talked to Manuel Veth about the chances of, you know, Sancho apparently is 50-50, which I kind of agree with. Uh, I don't I don't think that uh, – I actually don't think he'll be leaving very soon at all. But if you had to guess between the two of them, Holland and Sancho, who do you think will stay longer? Because I actually think with this weird transfer market, we could see them be kind of like really, you know, maybe cement themselves as like Dortmund players in a sense. Maybe I'm going too far, but you tell me. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I, to give my like honest per- personal opinion, it, it it technically has wavered a little bit, but all in all, it's been pretty consistent throughout the, the season. I feel like the board knows that they can't lose both players at the same time. So no matter what, I have a feeling that they're going to be staggered in the way that they leave. For example, one this year, one the next, one maybe none this summer, one the following summer, one the, the summer after that. But the release clause in Holland's contract, the, the alleged release clause, we don't know all the details because they keep changing every every day, but... We know that that's there, uh, and I had a feeling that Sancho would leave first, and then after the, uh, I guess, shenanigans um, Holland's agent uh, yeah. did on that world tour, I was kind of thinking back and forth, but 
both players deserve a huge amount of respect from me. Uh, I've, I've been, again, I've been a fan of this club for a long time now. I've seen a lot of players go in and out and I've seen a lot of players be very petty in the way that they kind of forced away of the club. I'm looking at Aubameyang. I'm looking at Dembele. Two players I absolutely adore. Unfortunately, they left on the wrong terms. And I give nothing but respect to Holland and Sancho. Both of them play for the badge. Both of them really look like they do enjoy being here. And both of them handle the media just so well for two very young men. But I still firmly believe Sancho will leave a year before Holland. And then Holland will probably follow the following year. I would love to see them stay long term. I'm a realist. I, I know the kind of how the way that this club r- works, the way that this club runs. It, it sounds good on paper. My one chance, my my one guess is that either Sancho leaves this summer, Holland the following, or because of COVID and the big price tags, Sancho leaves the following, and then Holland the summer after that. Okay, so you think Sancho leaves first? That's interesting. That's an, I kind of actually think the opposite, only because I feel like Sancho really. It just seems like he likes the club. It seems like he actually likes. I don't know. It seems like he likes everything about living in Germany. It seems like he's adapted but more. Whereas Holland, it seems like either whether it's his agent, whether it's his dad or himself, like he just seems to kind of want to leave a little bit more but that's that's interesting that you say that one other thing that was obviously just massive this season it felt like it was like like a like it went on for months and months even though it was only like two days was the super league i know you did a really long video you're talking to fans about it and everything um i'm not gonna lie to you i'm still really paranoid i'm pretty sure that this is gonna come back in some form or another uh and I've, obviously we've seen like you know Perez at times saying, oh, it's not dead at all. No, it's coming back. We're good. We're fine and everything. And and obviously with his club being in a lot of debt, there's very real chance that that's very much the truth. Uh, What do you think about all of it now? Like after, you know, we've been able to kind of digest it all. Yeah. I mean, that, that one stream I did was, was quite wild the the night of, Um, but I, I just, I feel like from a North American's perspective, it's, it's very interesting. And I feel like that's maybe why that that stream I did did so well is because uh, I know what exactly what it's like growing up with the NHL, the NBA, the NFL. They're, they're all run very, very differently. And I think that's what really drew, drew me to European football. Like I loved the variety of different leagues. I loved what it meant each and every season from from Champions League to Europa League to relegation, the, the stress all throughout the table. It, it was an incredible, it just, it just chucked me right in. And it's why it's my favorite sport from, being Canadian, I'm sorry, hockey. I like I do love you to death. <laughs> <laughs> when it when it comes to this, I just love the layout of it, and I thought it just it really broke my heart knowing that it might have changed. And I don't want another closed league. I don't want another birthright league. Arsenal, Tottenham, you don't deserve to be in a league mm. like that every single time. If you have a poor season, you should be punished. And it just kind of shows all the stress of what it's like. You've seen fans crying after relegation. You've seen fans crying after promotion. It's it's exactly what makes this sport so beautiful, so worldwide. And I think having a closed league would seriously ruin the sport. I was terrified for apparently a day and then <laughs> kind, of, <laughs> kind of slowed down. So I have a feeling that, like you said, it's definitely not going to be a closed book. But I'm hoping after the backlash that it showed what a beautiful sport and what fans can really do because it, it, it fell apart as quick as it started. Yeah, that was, yeah, it was, it was really one of the biggest reliefs I felt. I was like, I was like borderline traumatized when it happened, to be honest with you. I didn't know what to do with myself. I was ranting to everybody on Twitter and everything. It was, it was a tough couple of days. It was a tough couple of days, but I think, I think, you know what, as well, like the fans kind of realize now the power that they have, the players realize like, you know, when, when you kind of come together collectively you can fight even the biggest powers in the world. And that's really what the world of football was going up against. Uh, since we're kind of towards the end of this, Josh, uh, we got to We got to get uh, some predictions from you, the bull predictions for the euros. Uh, and you can pick anything. It doesn't have to be, it could be a player, it could be, be a team, it could be an event, whatever you want. Okay. Bold predictions. Well, I guess you guys will probably realize that um, because of my background, Germany will be the team I'll be supporting through the Euros. Wouldn't be a bold prediction to say that they're not going to do overly well. I, I don't think that they will, but I think uh, I think a bold prediction is, is France won't win it. Uh, I, I think that France side is fantastic. I think that they're the odds on favorite. I don't know what it is, and I think it's another beautiful thing of these big tournaments is that it's so hard to win back to back. It's not an easy thing to do. It's why you very rarely see it done. Spain, I believe, was the last club or the last country to do it, and I'm not even sure exactly after that who it would have been. 
Uh, but I just I have a feeling that uh, that maybe with the introduction of Benzema, maybe some of the chemistry's off. Griezmann's not what he used to be. Maybe a change in shape. I think they today, as we're speaking, they played in a four three three today rather than their four two three one. I feel like uh, they're going to get upset. I think they're still going to have a deep run, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if they get knocked out in let's say the semis. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, I I don't know what to to think of it either. Honestly, it seems very open, like really, really open, and that's an interesting one because they are. For me, I would say they're my number one side. Like, like in terms of talent, I think they're they're probably the best team. That's a that's a that's definitely a bull one, Josh. But I got one more for you. I'm going to give you one back for this one. So this could be a prediction for anything football wide. Like it could be Dortmund, it could be the Bundesliga, it could be a player, it could be anything you want. Go go for it. Hmm. Another bold prediction that could be like kind of worldwide. Any anything you want as far at least as far as like league football, I guess. Oh, league. Okay, I was gonna throw uh, the Canadian men's national team in there just for that would be bold. That would be a bold though. prediction. Yeah. <laughs> um, ah, a bold prediction next next season. Holland wins. Mm, no, I don't. I don't. I don't want to look. I don't want to look biased. I want to go. I want to go elsewhere. Harry Kane stays at Tottenham. Okay. Okay. Uh, do you think? <laughs> I mean, you know what? I I believe you with that one. Because Daniel Levy does not want to sell anybody, like at all, unless they're giving him two hundred million. Uh, yeah, don't like that guy to be honest with you. But uh, <laughs> I, will, I will be a little bit more biased. You might call me crazy on this one, Josh, but I don't. I, and I like Julian Nagelsmann. I do. I don't think his at least his first run with Bayern is going to work out very well. I think the way that Dortmund is set up right now, I think Dortmund wins the title. I think the way Holland is progressing, the way Sancho kind of came on later on in, in this season, the way Rosa plays, I, I have some faith in him. And as long as the squad stays mostly healthy, I'm not going to say they're going to blow anybody out, but I think they have a very, very, very strong chance to win the league. In fact, I will say they'll win the league. And because of that, because of that, Dortmund will become more of a place to kind of stay long-term for big talents like Drew Bellingham, Sancho, Reyna, all those guys. So... Yeah, that's my, that's mine right there. You you raised some interesting points. I'm gonna to try to knock them off quickly. Yeah, go for it. Go for it. One, I, I totally agree when it comes not that Dortmund are the odds on favorite, but I think because of the Bundesliga and all the managerial changes of the top seven clubs, it's gonna make it such an interesting league to watch. That in in Syria next season with managerial change, I don't think people really realize what it does to a team. Hansi Flick, for example, played the four two three one conservatively all year long. Now you have a manager like Nagelsmann who played a different formation every game. So. I think it's gonna be very interesting seeing all these new managers come into their new roles and try to implement their systems that was successful here, but maybe it's not successful there. So I think the Bundesliga is going to be very open next year. And I think it's gonna be very interesting seeing how these managers do. And I wouldn't be surprised if out of those seven managerial changes at the top of the table, two of them, for example, could get sacked because you don't know, you're, they got big shoes to fill. So that, that is, a, that is very, a very cool one. And uh, when it comes to Dortmund being a team that is here i guess for players to come and stay for the long run you're not again you're not you're not wrong whatsoever i mean it, it has been a club over time that looked like stepping stones but a couple seasons ago people keep telling me when are you going to be a club that is serious and i just i mean i, I roll roll those con those comments to the back because it's just obviously they don't have any legitimate claws to them but i think they are taking the right steps a couple years ago when they almost won the title they went out and they purchased schultz they put purchased hummels they purchased brant they purchased hazard those are four huge signings Yes, they didn't all live up to expectations, but you didn't know that going in from a, a almost title winning season to the following. Last summer, we didn't sell Holland, we didn't sell Sancho. And, and if we are able to pull that off again, then I can absolutely back that claim. No, yeah, I mean, and you know, you know what, as well, for me, it's just like, it, like I find it funny when people say, oh, well, you're, not, you're not a serious club. It's like, well, okay, if you look at it just like, oh, who's winning the league title over and over again, like, I'll give Byron credit. Byron's an incredible team. The fact that they've won this much and this consistently is incredible, especially with uh, all the managerial changes, like you mentioned, right? And if you look at season by season, Dortmund's been very close. I think, what was it, two years ago or even the year prior? Like, Dortmund was very, very close within, like, the title race, right? Exactly, right? And they just kind of slipped up at the end. You know, health became a, an issue for sure the last season, right? Especially in that, that really decisive match versus Bayern Munich. It was it was tough, but the reality is, is that they've always been right there and other clubs that have been too. So I totally back that, Josh. Absolutely.
Okay. Okay. Josh, just before we go, we have some quick hitters, just some fun questions. Our listeners would love to hear from you on the pod. Okay. So question number one, if you were in a Dortmund fan, what, um, what club would you support? If I wasn't a Dortmund fan, uh, yeah. it, 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 it's, it would be Chelsea. It'd be, it'd be Chelsea because the one, like I said, growing up, I watched a lot of Premier League as well. It was so easily accessible to Canadians. And my first ever coach gave me a Lampard jersey. So I have a soft okay. spot for Frank Lampard. I have a soft spot for Chelsea. And I have watched them a fair amount as well as Dortmund, obviously. So there you go. Okay. Okay. Uh, what position do you play? I played left wing. Or would play. Would play. I played left wing. I played at, at a relatively competitive level here in Canada. However you want to look at nice. that. But I played I played for a college team. I played left wing my pretty much my entire life. I uh, really liked, obviously, Marco Royce. He was an idol to me. He played on the left-hand side when he first joined Dortmund. And I used to play as a center attacking mid, kind of drifted out over to the left. And a lot of different injuries don't play as frequently anymore. But that was the last competitive position I've played. Okay. Um, have or have you not seen Ted Lasso, the TV show? I, <laughs> I, uh, I haven't seen Ted Lasso, no. And I, I have a couple of buddies reaching out to me saying, like, you need to watch it because they're like, I'm not even a, like a, a football fan, but this is yeah. hilarious. I've seen his skits on YouTube. Yeah. yeah. Hilarious. I just, I haven't been able to, to get it in and watch it, but it is top of my list. Yeah, Josh, I got to recommend it, man. I got to I got to recommend it, man. Having an American guy go run a football team in England, it, it was, it's a pretty 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 funny show. I got to admit that. <laughs> but we are mostly a music podcast, so we would be so angry. This would be so angry with us if we didn't ask you what what music are you listening to, man? Like what's in your playlist? Tragically Hip, Glorious Sons. That's the okay. kind of kind of music I, that we listen to. I mean, if you want to toss it back to, to T-Pain and Kanye when I'm going to have mm-hmm. a fun Saturday night, I mean, I can do that too. But my favorite nice. type of music is that that kind of rock. Glory Suns are the last concert I've been to. Canadian, tra- Tragically Hip, obviously. Just, I can't say enough about that band. So that's, that's kind of my taste in music. I'm not a big music person like throughout the week. I'm more, for example, would listen to a podcast rather than music. But on the weekend, if you're looking to fire me up, that's what you, uh, that's what you toss on. Nice, nice. Okay, now this is a staple question we ask all of our guests here at, at the No Good Podcast. What is something that, you know, people love and adore, but is no good to you? Dogs. Wow. <laughs> I think that that's definitely... That's that what, is up there in the answers. <laughs> wow. I've met, wow. Before we got, like, before we had ketchup, uh, ketchup. chocolate or something like that. Wow. Yeah. Dogs. So are wow, you a top five top five five animal, animal person? Uh, I, I love animals. I don't nothing against dogs. I, I love I love cats. I have a cat. Um, I just I I have my my mom had this little rat looking dog for the longest time. And <laughs> it was yeah. no good to me. So you said something that's no good to me. That okay, everyone, okay. everyone who would walk in like that thing's so cute and like get it away. I just I I don't <laughs> eat them here, but. Yeah, so I love how real the answer is. That's definitely gonna be top five, man. For, for I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna ripped on. I'm gonna get ripped on. You <laughs> don't like that answer, but you know what? Speaking from the heart, I really appreciate we here at the Doga Podcast. But Josh, just before we go, let our listeners know what's coming next. Uh, where we can find you on socials, your YouTube channel, videos are coming up, all of that goodness. Yeah, I mean the the number one place you guys want to find us is at JJD TV on YouTube. We obviously do a ton of stuff with uh, Dortmund, but over the summertime, it sh- should be a lot of fun. We'll have a lot of content on the Euros. We'll have a lot of content on the Canadian men's national team for World Cup qualifiers, for the Gold Cup. It should be a lot of fun for that kind of stuff. And then we have a nice special project coming up with the club that I got to keep my lips sealed, but it will be pretty cool. It's a way right. to engage international fans, and I'm very honored to be a part of it and to hopefully uh, to get it out there. So. Yeah, it'll it'll be a lot of fun. And from there, you can find our other socials. But that's the big one. And hopefully, we'll uh, find some new subscribers. Awesome, awesome. Josh, thank you for taking time out of your super busy schedule to come sit with us today on the No Good Podcast. We really do appreciate it. Not a problem, guys. It was a lot of fun. Good conversation. And uh, yeah, a couple Canadians can't complain. (laughs) Awesome. Until next time, it's the boys from the No Good Podcast. We'll see you soon. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please drop a like, share it with your friends, and subscribe to Lingo Sports and Lingo News for a whole lot more just like this.